Uh, hello everyone. A very good morning to all. Myself, Vinayra Chaudhary, ADT Innovation and Tapered. I extend my warm welcome to all of you. I welcome the chair of today's session, Sri UK Srivastava sir, Senior DDG and Tapered. Welcome sir. Now I invite Sri Atul Sinha sir, DDG Admin and Tapered for the inaugural address. Over to you sir. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, respected senior DG and head of NTI Pit, she, uh, UK Shivasa said. Uh, senior most officer, one of the senior most officer uh, of uh, Haan, uh, Indian Telecom Services and of our department. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've never we are very uh, lucky that Deepak Sitwini sir has joined us today in this webinar. Sir, we welcome you in this webinar session, sir. Deepak Sitwini sir. Thank you very much. So allow me, to, uh, uh, allow me to join and giving this opportunity. We are welcome, sir. Uh, uh, dear friends and uh, participants, officers of uh, uh, NTI Bridge and senior officers of other uh, units of uh, DOT, LSA units and DC, C dot ITI, etc. Uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you uh, in today's webinar on a very, very important and relevant topic that is cryptography. Friends, in a very generic sense, cryptography is the science of secret writing that brings numerous techniques to safeguard information that is present in an unreadable format. Only the designated recipient can convert this unreadable format into readable format. Whether we are aware or not, but most of the electronic transactions that are, play, are taking place in our day to day life, they are uh, being done with the help of cryptography by using encryption techniques. Be it mobile communication, everybody is communicating mob uh, on mobile every day, uh, but uh, some of you may not be aware that it is completely. Uh, encrypted message that is flowing onto the air uh, interface. Be it WhatsApp messages, social media messages, be it financial transactions, banking transactions, etc. Any message uh, which is uh, being transported onto the electronic media is mostly encrypted in an encrypted form so that only the end users can decrypt it and use it. And if at all it is uh, intercepted in between, it is uh, in uh, encrypted form. Nobody can know it. What is mentioned inside it? Friends, this uh, the webinar content has been very meticulously designed by NTI Prits in-house cyber security expert, Mr. Vinod Singh, director. Uh, uh, you will definitely find the practical demonstrations of some of the encryption techniques very interesting, and I am very sure that uh, the information, the knowledge, the experience, the demonstration that NTI Pret is going to share uh, with you through this uh, webinar is going to be very, very useful for all of you in some way of your life or the other. Friends, with this uh, initial uh, remarks, I uh, once again, welcome you all in this very interesting uh, seminar. I'm very sure that you're going to enjoy this uh, one and a half hour or two hours uh, webinar session. I would also like to uh, um, uh, inform you once again that every witness day for the last complete quarter, NTI Pit has uh, uh, organized webinars on uh, latest technologies uh, that are available earlier on uh, mobile technologies, on 6G and so on and so forth. And you have always been uh, attending these seminars in uh, large numbers, giving your patronage to NTI Prit for this initiative of NTI Prit. We, I, on behalf of NTI Prit, uh, thank you all for uh, giving us uh, this support by joining this. Uh, once again, I welcome you all in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Over to you, Vinay. 
thank you so much sir for sharing a glimpse of uh, this session as atul sir has mentioned uh, today's session on cryptography is being presented by one of our esteemed faculty member shri vinod singh sir sir is an its officer presently serving as director innovation and knowledge repository at nti prit sir has vast experience in telecommunications domain and has special interest and expertise in the field of cyber security before we begin the session i request all the participants to keep their audio muted and cameras off during the session the questions and answers will be taken towards the end of the session now without further ado i request uh, shri vinod singh sir to take over the stage welcome sir Uh, thank you very much, Vinay. Uh, I suppose I am uh, audible to everyone. Vinay, can you confirm? Yes, Vinod, you are audible. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, uh, thank you, Vinay, and thank you, Atul sir, for uh, uh, introducing the session uh, to the audience. And you have really made my job quite easy. Uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very good morning, and all. Welcome to all of you from NTI Pit faculty and family. Uh, friends, uh, in this pandemic, I, I I do pray and hope that all of you are in a uh, very good state of health in this pandemic. Uh, friends, we are to, today going to discuss a very important and interesting attribute of human being that is keeping secrets. Uh, <laughs> I must not say you must be keeping many many secrets with your spouses also. Uh, so uh, jokes apart, but uh, uh, keeping secrets has been uh, a phenomena of human beings since long. At least we have been keeping secrets long before the computers came into existence. So uh, 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 in this session, we will be talking about that how the computers and the machines keep secret and in what lingo. So uh, we'll be discussing a lot about cryptography. We will be we will be starting from the history of the cryptography and. And uh, uh, bit by bit, I will drill into the higher echelons of cryptography. What are cryptography? What are hash functions? What are ciphers? What are symmetric uh, uh, cryptography? What is asymmetric cryptography? I will also give you a live demo. So please hook on till the session is. Don't leave in between. You will regret that you will be losing this session if you uh, in the midway you lose it. Uh, there will be live demo about uh, the um, uh, digital signatures. Uh, there will be live demo of uh, digital certificates, there will be live demo of hash functions and everything. So just keep glued. Uh, uh, with this brief introduction, let me share my screen to all of you. Uh, well, friends, I, I suppose I suppose my screen is quite visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. Uh, before uh, before starting the session, I would again request all the participants to keep their uh, uh, mic shut and video shut, and we will be taking all your questions uh, after the session. Meanwhile, let me present you. If you are having any problem uh, viewing the content, there is, then uh, there is one function. You can click on the three dots here, and uh, there is a full screen uh, uh, full screen uh, menu here. You can click on this full screen, and your video will be full screen. So that if you are facing any problem with small fonts or small screen, then you can go in uh, full screen, and the full screen of the presentation will be visible to you. So uh, let us quickly dwell upon uh, what we have in the basket for you for the cryptography. So. Cryptography. cryptography is an art, is in science, is in mathematics, and in technical lingo, if you say the cryptography addresses the principal beans and methods of applying mathematical algorithms and data transformation to information uh, uh, to secure integrity, confidentiality, and authentication. You just know down these three terms: the integrity, confidentiality, and authentication. We will be frequently using these terms whenever, uh, as soon as uh, as we uh, go through the lane of cryptography. Uh, what I will be discussing in today's session, it, uh, this is the, just a brief of the contents. I will be discussing uh, the uh, definition, the cryptography uh, history. Uh, then we'll be dwelling into what are the cipher types. Uh, don't bother about what cipher is. I will tell you everything about what cipher is. So we'll be discussing about uh, classical ciphers, modern uh, ciphers. Then we'll deep dive into hash functions. 
then we will tell you about symmetrical uh, key cryptography, then asymmetric key cryptography, then also uh, you might not have heard about the hybrid cryptography. We'll be discussing something about hybrid cryptography also. After that, we will be uh, going uh, into uh, what are the use cases and how the cryptography is put into use daily. So we'll be discussing the public key infrastructure, the digital signature, the digital certificate, and of course, uh, the web that you browse over secure web, that is HTTPS. So, uh, 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 to kick start the session, uh, why, why basically we need a cryptography? Uh, so, uh, we know, uh, all, all the uh, protocols that were designed uh, uh, when, when the computer networking started, uh, basically computer networking started with ARPANET. Uh, that was the US defense network that was launched in 1969. And since then, there were some protocols developed like uh, uh, you can, if you recall, the TCP protocol was developed in uh, 1974. Right. So at the time, the network was supposed to be used by very clean people. They were not anticipating that there will be security concerns also. So that is the reason all the uh, protocols, the communication protocol that are carried over from the history, they are still being used as it is, and they are not having any security components. But now, as the network is spreading, we are having a lot of hackers, uh, uh, state-sponsored uh, attacks, so there is a very important need uh, to have a secure type of communication over our uh, previously um, uh, uh, chalked out protocols. So the main concept and the main objective of cryptography is that how you maintain the confidentiality of the document or the information that you are sharing over the computer. That is, unauthorized persons could not should not access the information. The second most important objective of cryptography is the integrity of the document or the information that you are sharing to the peers. Means that whatever information you are sharing, that should not be modified while in transit or in that. Now, with these two objectives of cryptography, the main, uh, how, how actually cryptography achieve these two objectives? They are done in two forms, basically one is uh, the, the, the confidentiality part is being done with the encryption and second part is integrity. Integrity is being done by hash of mice's digest. So many people are uh, having uh, 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 reason, uh, many people are having the understanding that whenever we mean cryptography, cryptography just means encryption, but it is not so. Uh, uh, cryptography is much more than encryption. That is where the hash functions come into picture. So when we uh, uh, talk of the integrity, then immediately the hash functions come into picture. So in integrity, there are two more components that is authentication and non-repudiation. What we mean by authentication means that if I am sharing uh, some information to my peer, then I should be identifiable that this information has come from me. Second part is non-repudiation. What is non-repudiation? So non-repetition basically is that if I'm sending uh, uh, information, if I'm sending a file to anybody, then I should not revert back by saying that, no, I haven't sent this file or this, I'm not the originator of the file, right? So there must be a foolproof system that if the message is being sent by me, uh, I should not fool around that, uh, of course, I don't own this message, right? Uh, one thing I would like to emphasize here, the, it, uh, many people uh, in the security area, they confuse the CIA triad with this uh, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication subject of cryptography. In fact, when we talk of CIA triad in security paradigm, then A stands for availability. It is not for authentication, right? So in security, it is confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information. But in cryptography, it is confidentiality, integrity and authentication of the information. Uh, uh, further, uh, before I touch upon uh, the technology behind the cryptography, it is very much important to address you what are the terms that are related to cryptography. Uh, so these are some important terms that you should keep in mind uh, during the complete session so that you can understand well what I am going to tell you. So first is, the cryptography. What is the cryptography? Cryptography, as Atul Sahar has already told you, it is science of secret writing, right? Then second term is the science of cryptology, the subject cryptology, right? 
So uh, like we have other subjects, the cryptology subject itself is having two components. One is cryptography and second is cryptoanalysis. Whereas cryptography, you know, it is a secret writing. The cryptoanalysis is just opposite, 180 degree opposite of the thing that in cryptoanalysis, we try to break the cryptography. It means uh, uh, there is some cryptographic element, algorithm and we try to break it, right? So cryptoanalysis is not from the point of attacker, but it is from the point of testing of the cryptography algorithm that you design. That your cryptography algorithm is foolproof. So that we ensure with the help of crypto analysis. Then of course there are crypto systems. So if you think that cryptography is uh, limited to software, no, it is not so. Cryptography means that you can uh, hide the information both in hardware and software format. We will see uh, as we dwell further into the session. Then of course, two more important terms associated with the cryptography are algorithm and cipher. So algorithm are basically the precise rule, right? With which we encrypt or do uh, secreting, uh, do uh, hide or do make the information in secret. Then comes the cipher. Okay, cipher is basically that, uh, uh, you can say that formula, that mathematics involved in cryptography, which actually does the function of encryption or uh, making message digest. So algorithm is a set of rules, but cipher is actual machine, actual software, or actual uh, uh, model uh, which uh, performs the uh, secret part of uh, making any uh, making any information secret. Uh, uh, right. Uh, so we are having one crypto machine, and uh, uh, we input something to it, right? And in the end, we get the encrypted message. So what we input to the crypto machine is actually the plain text or the clear text that we call. That is the raw input to any cryptography system that is called the clear text or plain text, right? And at the output of the cryptographic system, there is a cipher text or cipher or cryptogram. So this is the output of any cryptographic system. And this is a scrambled data, which normally uh, 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 is ineligible and uh, you can't uh, you can't actually uh, see that message without having the rights to see the message actually. In cryptography, uh, the function of encrypting or scrambling the data that you intend to send over the network that is called the encryption or you call uh, enciphering or you can call it encoding also. At the receiving end, when uh, you Descambled the key, this descambled the data. Uh, that is called the decryption or uh, deciphering or decoding the information, right? Uh, when you convert the uh, convert the scrambled data in the original form of data, so that you can understand it. Unless until uh, the encrypted uh, information is decrypted, you can't understand. It will be just junk set of characters. Then uh, crypto analysis, I have already told you. And uh, then one important factor that comes is the work factor. So what is the work factor basically? Okay, uh, in cryptography, uh, the main strength of cryptography is that you make cryptography so hard that at the breaking end, if someone wants to break it, then it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of computing power. So more is the computing power needed, more is the uh, work factor needed, more will be your uh, strong the cryptography will be. Of course, uh, um, uh, cryptography, you can understand it is a set of key and lock. So uh, uh, you can say uh, the lock is your ciphering mechanism and keys with which you can lock the information and unlock the information. So key is a very important factor here with which you encrypt the information and you decrypt the information also. So from here, actually, the symmetric key encryption, encryption or asymmetric key encryption comes into picture, right? So that was all about the vehicle of uh, cryptography. Uh, now I'll just tell you what is the history of the cryptography. If you think that cryptography came after the computer, then you are wrong. Cryptography dates back as long as 1500 BC. Uh, 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 there was Mesopotamian tablet that were containing the encrypted formulas that give a glimpse of the history of the cryptography. And uh, uh, the uh, main cryptography started uh, something between uh, 50 to 60 BC uh, with Julius Caesar. It was a very important, uh, he was very important uh, Roman uh, ruler. He, he actually started the cryptography of substitution. And I will tell you what a substitution is. Uh, uh, you will be amazed to know that although substitution was 
uh, find and it was used in 560 BC, but then two substitution is still used in the uh, recent uh, and uh, modern cryptography also. Cryptography, uh, uh, cryptography come into full existence during the World War II. And World War II, as you know, uh, the Axis powers and the Allied powers were locked on. So, of course, the, uh, Germans are known to and at that time also they were having the best technology. So in World War II, basically, uh, the Germans developed these machines, these mechanical machines. Uh, this is called the Lalange, uh, Lalange machine and this is called the Enigma machine. In fact, if you Wikipedia, Enigma was so famous that they, they, uh, they sold uh, uh, many machines of Enigma machines to uh, encrypt the data. Uh, so these were, uh, these were developed by the Axis powers, but Allied powers led by USA and UK, they were not far behind. They immediately in the World War II era itself, they uh, developed such huge machines. You can see just magnanimity of these machines, how huge these machines are. So they developed the machines which were basically targeting the previous Enigma and Lodge machines and they were deployed to decrypt the uh, Lodge machines. Uh, this was colossal Mark I and Mark II, they were employed to decrypt the messages which were encrypted by Lorenz machines. And then the British further developed these Bombay machines which are basically targeting the Enigma machines. The, uh, that, was, that was the mechanical uh, cryptography that we saw. The modern uh, computer cryptography came into existence from around uh, 1976 when uh, the DES or the data encryption standard is started, right? So uh, it is amazing to know that actually data encryption standard is started so many years back in 1976, but still we are using the DES. So we can just imagine how people at the time thought about the secrecy and how strong those algorithms are that they are still existent and they still have the relevance. The paradigm shift into cryptography came uh, with the RSA algorithm that was developed in 1979. In fact, RSA encryption is still used and in the mainstream, it is the main, I repeat, it is the mainstream of asymmetric encryption, asymmetric uh, encryption that we use in uh, digital signatures and digital certificates. Uh, uh, and uh, also you would have heard about advanced encryption uh, standard that is AES, right? So, AES was again developed in 2000 and we are sitting right now in 2021. We still know that AES is one of the best encryption algorithm that we ever had and have. So uh, that was a brief history about uh, uh, cryptography systems. Now, uh, uh, we will be dwelling uh, into the mainstream of cryptography and what cryptography is and what is cryptography algorithm and operation. So, in cryptography, we talk of cryptographic algorithm. So what is cryptographic algorithm? It is a set of mathematical functions and rules that take plain text, add a key. So here the key is very much important because with the key you decrypt or encrypt your information, right? So this is the algorithm, this is a set of rules. Then again, in cryptographic operation, we are having two main operations, that is the encryption and decryption of the data. So at, at, at your uh, sending end, you, you uh, there is a crypto shifting system here and you input any plain text or raw information to crypto system and you apply a key to get a cipher text. Cipher text is the scrambled data. It is junk data which you can't use until unless you decrypt. And at the receiving end, this information is being decrypted with the same key. So why we are using the same key, I will let you know in further delivery. So, uh, when, whenever we develop uh, any crypto system, right? So the main goal of any crypto system that how a crypto system should be designed, it is based on two principles. One is your, that it should be too expensive and it should be too time, in con time consuming, right? So what do you mean by this too expensive or too time, time consuming factors? Means that if you develop any uh, algorithm or any crypto system. Too expensive means if anyone tries to break your crypto system, then it should be very expensive for him. He has to deploy heavy computational power to actually decrypt or break the algorithm. 
second most important thing is the time consuming as you all know that longer the password is longer you are safe means longer the password is the harder it is to break and it will take years to break the password so any crypto system is designed keeping in mind that if somebody wants to break it then it is very very time consuming and he is not able to break it uh, easily the strength of any encryption system lies in four factors uh, uh the algorithm means the rule suit uh, rule uh, rule set with which we are uh, having the uh, crypto system then the secrecy of the key as i told you in passwords also the longer is the password the longer is the security the uh, form is the security of the information right and of course uh, uh length of the key and the secrecy of the key means if we uh share the key with anyone then of course that it is of no use if i'm giving a password of say 15 characters and i'm sharing the password with my friend then of course uh, there is no value in keeping a uh, password of 15 digits so secrecy as well as the length of the key is very very important then there is one more factor that is called the initialization vector so initialization vector i will tell you in between and in all all these four components how they mingle up and how they are associated with each other and how they all work that is the beauty of the uh, crypto system and they define the strength of the encryption so with this uh, 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 brief of uh, what the cryptography is and what is the objective and how the goals are achieved in cryptography, we will be now dwelling into the main stream of cryptography that is called a cipher. So we will be discussing about cipher and ciphers are two types of cipher. One is your classical cipher and one is your modern cipher. Classical cipher, when I say, I mean that what were the old cipher that were developed and mind it, they are not old so much. They are still in use. And then we'll be discussing the modern cipher like RSA and uh, AES. So, uh, friends, uh, uh, when we talk of classical software, uh, classical soft, uh, ciphers, there are many, many ciphers available in the market. Uh, but the main, uh, uh, there are main four uh, type of uh, classical cipher. Uh, one is your substitution cipher, then your transposition cipher polyalphabetic and concealment software then uh, in modern ciphers we have the classification as block cipher steam cipher stenography and combination of the, all these we'll be looking into all these cipher mechanism one by one so that you can understand the first most important uh, cipher is the substitution software if you recall our slides i had told you that uh, Julius Caesar first used the substitution cipher right so what this substitution cipher is substitution as the name indicates that you save the information bit by bit, right? So if there is information and I set a, a set of character that the information is uh, comprising of set of alphabets from A to Z. So I basically define a cipher that I will be shifting the complete information set by a factor of three. Means I will shift, uh, if, if there is A in the information, I will shift it, I will make it shifted by three and I will make it D. If there is a B in information, I will shift it by three and it will become e and like that uh to to have a more uh, um, uh feel about this uh, substitution uh, cipher i will just give you a demo of substitution cipher just give me a moment so here we are having the uh one crypto uh, crypto tool so uh, I'm, I'm just taking this uh, uh this is called uh, Caesar cipher. Caesar, uh, as I told you, uh, the uh, Julius Caesar, Julian Caesar first uh, developed this substitution cipher. So uh, I am having this text here: the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And here I am expressing that shift all the characters available in this input information, the raw information, all the plain text information, by a factor of ten. That means whenever there is a, that becomes k, and simultaneously, right? So if I run this. You can see uh, here. Here is the output. You can see the output here. So you can see the information is being shifted. The K has become D. The uh, uh, H has become R, and E has become O. The main takeaway with this uh, time type of uh, mechanism or the substitution cipher is that the amount of information that is contained in the input 
is same as that is output. So if there are 100 characters in the input text or the plain text, there will be 100 characters in the output stream also. So that is about the uh, cipher uh, substitution cipher. Then one more important cipher is your transposition cipher. So transposition cipher, if you recall, uh, you would have uh, learned in your uh, um, uh, uh, first or second uh, year of graduation, engineering graduation, or twelfth class, twelfth uh, uh, class, uh, uh, about the matrix. So, what in uh, transposition cipher we do that we define a matrix of say uh, so many columns, and we input the text in row format, and then we jumble up the matrix uh, in 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 a in a uh, you can say. Uh, Increasing or decreasing order. Suppose I am ha I am having a matrix in which I am having uh, five five columns. So whatever information I am writing, I will I will uh, by row by row I will write in these five columns. And at the end of ciphering, I will just make them in order. And I will write the output in columnar format. This will be much more clear when I show you the actual. Uh, uh, phenomena and actual demo how the transposition cipher works. So I'll be going again to our demo window. Here I am having this transposition. So uh, okay, uh, I am having this text here. We are uh, discovered. Oh, my, I can. Um, you can write anything. Like I write here, I am. We know saying, right? So just focus on this window. Uh, this will be quick one, so just focus on this window. It will tell you that how the transposition uh, transposition cipher works. So I just make it. You can see it is writing in row wise, and then text are being taken in column wise. And what will be actually the output? It will be something like that, right? So again, the takeaway is. The amount of information that is being inputted here, that same will be available here. So the quantum information, if there are 100 bytes uh, in the in the plain text, there will be 100 bytes in the output also. But uh, transposition cipher takes a step ahead of your shifting cipher that was uh, substitution cipher. Again, it is uh, uh, quite interesting to know that transposition cipher is still used in all your modern ciphers also. So let us go further. Then there is a concealment cipher. Concealment cipher is quite easy that you conceal your information uh, in, in a bigger space of information, right? So if I want to convey that, uh, convey to my peer that by gold now, so I'll be hiding info, this information eager in a bigger, bigger set of information, right? So if I want to say by gold, now I'll be I, I'll be just sending this text. I have been trying to buy you a nice gift like gold or an, an antique, but the prices now are really high. And I will just tell the recipient that you count the sixth word, that you just count the sixth word in, uh, in, in the text that I have sent. And if you count the sixth word by the sixth word, gold is again the sixth word and now is again the sixth word. So actually when you decrypt, it will just give you the information by gold now. So we have basically concealed the information in a bigger space of information. This is quite easy and not very much used. So uh, uh, that was all about the classical type of uh, uh, ciphers, but mind it, me, uh, classical doesn't mean that they are, don't, they are not used, they are still used. Next important thing is the modern cipher. So when we talk of modern ciphers, uh, modern ciphers are uh, basically uh, divided into two parts. One is your block cipher mechanism, and second is the stream cipher mechanism. So as you can derive from the uh, word block, so this kind of cipher or the encryption technique basically works on the block or the chunk of information. So. Uh, a set of uh, a set of bits is taken into consideration while it is uh, while ciphering or encryption. So if if I am having a hundred k file, then it will be broken into pieces and 
each piece is each piece will be ciphered or uh, encrypted separately. So usually the practice is that we break the file into 64 gigabit component, and these 64 bit individual pieces are being encrypted by the by uh, by the ciphering mechanism um, applying and key. Uh, this uh, uh, block cipher mechanism actually is slower than your steam cipher. We will discuss what the steam cipher is. And all the recent uh, uh, ciphering techniques that you hear, like DES, triple DES, or AES, they all are using the block cipher. Of course, there's a lot of mathematics involved in this cipher. I will not be using the mathematics because, um, uh, uh, like always, uh, um, everyone says uh, we are afraid of mathematics, so I am also afraid of mathematics. So I'll be not discussing what is the mathematics behind this block cipher and uh, this stream cipher, but just to understand that in block cipher, we divide the file into chunks and we process individual chunks separately. So all the chunks are separately uh, encrypted. And at the end, the, all the chunks are combined to give you the cipher the information. Next is the Steam cipher. So Steam cipher is quite faster than your block cipher. And Steam cipher, as opposed to your black cipher, it operates on the bit level, right? And in each Steam cipher, we we have a common engine that is XOR engine. If you just recall your uh, computer logics uh, 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 book of tandem, right? So uh, Tenberg. So uh, actually, uh, there, there's a plain text and there's a key key stream, and we x all the plain text with the key stream, and uh, the x odd output is the cipher text, right? Main takeaway here is that because you are xoring, so the key stream will be having the same length as the plain text, right? So uh, main takeaway with the cipher uh, stream cipher is that it is quite fast. It operates at a bit level. And uh, it is well suited for serial communication, right? It was initially implemented uh, in hardware, but we are having this kind of uh, cipher steam in software also. So uh, there is a very good example of uh, steam cipher that is RC4. Uh, if someone of you know uh, what we uh, use in WEP encryption in wireless communication, the WEP has this steam cipher of RC4. Uh, now we will be discussing one very, very interesting, uh, very interesting topic that is stratigraphy. Uh, uh, whenever we discuss cryptography, stratigraphy by default comes into picture. But said that stratigraphy has basically nothing to do with cryptography, but it is very, very much used because uh, uh, you saw the basic aim of cryptography is to hide the information, make the information secret, and stratigraphy does it in the same way. But of course. Uh, we don't do encryption. Mind it, when I said that we don't use encryption by, uh, 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 you can say, uh, uh, raw meanings, we can say that stratigraphy doesn't use encryption, but uh, modern techniques are there that in, in stratigraphy also we, we imply encryption. But basically, uh, stratigraphy doesn't involve encryption, right? Initially, stratigraphy was used to hide information in in a cover information, but now stratigraphy is used very much by the attackers. Stratigraphy is basically you hide the message component in some other files. Uh, if you recall, I have shown you the concealment, uh, concealment, uh, 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 concealment cipher in in classical uh, ciphers. So it is it is a type of concealment that we conceal a file information file in some other file. Usually, the cover file is usually a uh, image file, right? Why we choose image file? Because image file is having a lot of voids, or you can say vacuum. Uh, you can manipulate the pixels. If you manipulate uh, pixels a little bit, it will not actually uh, uh, deteriorate the image, right? So when we do stratigraphy, you will get the image itself. But looking at the image, you can't tell that this image actually contains some information. And all the attackers, they use this technique to hide malicious code in the image files. That is why we say that whenever you receive an email from an untested source and the email contains an image, then don't click it, don't click it, don't click it. The image file can contain malicious content. And as soon as you click the image, the malicious code will get executed and your computer and the computer network can get compromised. I will just show you the stenography. It is very interesting. Just look at it.
so uh, i i want everyone to just focus on on my screen right so uh, but it's very much important to notice what i'm having uh, uh, in, in the in, in the content of this folder right i'm apparently having three files one is delia.that it is a jpg file it is a beautiful flower delia flower that flower i'm having one information file uh, this this is an uh, basically a uh, wall file uh, so i just want to show that this is the information that i want to carry right this is the information that i want to hide in 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 stenography right so this is the information and this will be the uh, you can say this is a carrier file right so this carrier file will contain this information and you will not know that this carrier file is basically containing this information what i will do is that i will just open this small uh, program and i will choose the message file here message file of course is my this file right so this is my message file and then i will choose the carry file that this is the red right So I have chosen this. Now I am going to uh, hide this file into this file, and I am going to produce one more file that will be called something. Dot png. Right, and I will just click. Now just mon just just look here. I am having no uh, no JPEG file or no uh, image file in this folder. i will just click here hide data and just you watch this folder watch this folder carefully right so that the magic is happened you are having one whole file that is a string file that we that i that is mentioned in the output right so this is basically the information and if you just look at at, at the status bar what this is by saying this file has a size of 4.37 mb when the original file was just 217 kb so this file is basically containing the information this information hidden over this cover right so uh this is this is called stenography i will also show you how to decrypt it uh, uh, for decryption i i just uh, i will just delete this file now i am having all these three files i will again open my uh file i will open this file this is the file which i created uh, while hiding data right now carefully observe here again observe this folder yeah so i had deleted the file now i have recovered the file this the, this was the original file which was hidden in this file i have i have recovered the file from this one actually this i am doing with the help of a software this can be done with the uh, with any hack editor also uh, and uh, this can be uh, manipulated in a such a way such a way that this file is actually a malicious file that be hidden in this in this file and as soon as i click this file this malicious code will get executed and in in can, in can infect my computer so uh, that is a very lethal tool being used by the attackers so that, that is a part of uh, cyber security i will not discussing too much about it so we'll be uh, jumping uh, again uh, to our presentation that was stenography quite interesting subject now we will move to hash function we have to cover a lot so hash function is something that people uh, offer don't associate with cryptography if you don't know cryptography cryptography as i told you many people think that it is basically encryption and uh, uh, making the uh, information secret but hash function is quite important right hash function basically doesn't do the encryption but this plays a very important role in authentication and reproduction component of cryptography we will see simultaneously what and how this is being done so a uh, hash function is what what the definition is whenever you talk of hash function hash function basically takes any information it can be text it can be a file right it can be any kind of file that you can think of right or it can be any information and it 
take that information as an input and outputs a fixed size value, right? So it is not dependent upon the size of the information. This is the first take. And second take is that it outputs a fixed size value, right? So this, what is a fixed size of value that depends upon how and what kind of hash function basically you are employing, right? To make the hash. Two important factors when we uh, do hashing that come into way are the pre-image resistance and collision resistance. What is meant by pre-image resistance is that hash function is one way. As I told you, the hash function is not depending upon the size of information that is input to the hash function. That means that the file can be of 1 KB, 10 KB, 10 MB, 100 MB, 1 gigabyte, but the hash function will be a fixed size. Right? If the hash function supposes 64K, then it will be 64K hash function only. So with this, if you are having the hash function, that means that you will do you you won't be able to derive the original information from the hash function. It is a one-way traffic, right? So from hash function, you can't derive the original input file, right? So hash function is basically thumbprint. It is a thumbprint of any file that this file is something. And if you modify the file, the thumb image will change. So said that it is an important factor to establish integrity of the file, right? As soon as you change any content of the file, even by a single character, the hash value will change, right? That is where this term, the collision resistance comes. Means two input into hash function should not produce the same hash value. Means if there are two files, two information, and even a single character is being changed, the hash function will immediately change, right? Now, hash function can take two parts, uh, sorry, three parts. Uh, uh, as I told you in my previous slides, hash functions are basically responsible for integrity, authentication, and non repetition of data. Now, how you use the hash function, this basically explains or this actually uh, uh, I can say this this uh, this tells you that uh, 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 what what uh, component of hash is being utilized right um, uh, 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 first is your uh, message digest uh, message authentication and distance message digest means if you are uh, using the hash function in such a fashion that you are just inputting the file to a hash function and taking the output, right? So in this manner, you are generating a hash, which is a fingerprint of an input file. And if you change the input file, the hash function will change. What does mean that if you use hashing algorithm as a message digest only, that will ensure only the integrity part of the hashing mechanism, right? Listen it again. When you use is it as a message digest, then you are just inputting the input file to a hash function and you are getting the hash, right? So in this, you are getting the integrity of the file only. It means if there is change in file, then you can know. The second is the message authentication. Now what? Now you you just imagine the scenario in which I generated a hash and I protected with a key. Right, put it with the key means I am sorting it with the key. In the input hash function, I am inputting the input file as well as I am inputting the key. The key is personal to me; it is a private key. So the hash function will have two inputs. One is the information that I want to convert into hash, and second is my key. So the output will be depending upon the input key and the input plain text information. So if anyone tries to change the key, then it will be of no use. So at the receiving end, the person will know that if this information has come as a message authentication, then of course it must have been hashed with the signature of the sender. So along with the uh, hash fingerprint of the file, the hash is also containing the fingerprint of the signature of the key. And this key will authenticate the sender of the file. Second thing is the digital signature. Digital signature is a step ahead of this message digestion and message authentication. 
in which we use the third trusted party. What is this third, third trusted party we will discuss as we progress in the session. So what this is doing that uh, we are using the same thing as we used here that in the hash function, we are inputting the file, we are generating the hash, but we are protecting the hash with a key. And this key is verified from a third party, which has actually verified the sender. And now I, I can understand this is this is a bit complex. Now I will repeat, repeat it again. You drive a hash function of a file, you put a signature in it, and that you send to the recipient. The recipient will verify the signature from a third trusted party, which the third trusted party has verified me, the sender. So in effect, the recipient will know that this is coming from an authenticated source which is being verified by a third party and third party is trusted. So this is a chain of trust, right? So with this, the factor of non-repetition comes, means if I have sent the file, then I can't deny that this file was not sent by me. In case of message digest, in fact, the key can be generated by anyone. But the key and sharp difference in signature is that the key with which I signed the hash is actually being verified by a third party and third party will verify me that he has or I am the person who has sent the file. And in effect, this will uh, this will uh, satisfy the condition of non-repetition means I can't deny that the file has been sent by me. So this is the importance of hash function. Actually, whenever you want to uh, want your information to carry these characteristics, that is integrity, authentication, and non-repetition, then of course you go for the digital signature. Now, this uh, digital signature can be of three types. Again, we we have uh, three flavors. Uh, one is keyed, uh, uh, keyed, uh, non-keyed, uh, non-keyed digest. Uh, 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 which which I already told you, there's the message digest. So message digest is basically coming from non-key digest in which we are not using the key. It ensures only to, only the integrity part of the crypto. The second is your message authentication. Here it is called the key digest. So it is used for authentication as well as integrity as well as uh, integrity. So whenever we are keying the digest, that means we are ensuring the integrity of the information as well as we are authenticating the serve, the center of the information. And third, that we discussed digital signature. So digital signature basically it also ensures that uh, the case is non-reproduction means the sender can't deny that he has sent the file. So there are uh, okay, uh, many types of hash functions that are available. Uh, you would have heard about these hash functions. They are MD5 uh, is quite famous hash function, and uh, then uh, we have SHA. So uh, after MD because uh, MD5 was having a limit. Um, uh, uh, it, it is have, it is having a limit of um, uh, lower lower limit one um, uh, uh, lower the lower limit of uh, uh, 64 uh, 64 characters only. So uh, uh, MD5 was further uh, substituted by the SHA, and then we have SHA 224, uh, 256, uh, 384, 512. So all these SHA uh, uh, SHA that I am telling you SHA uh, 224, 256, 384, 512. They are coming into same category of that we call SHA 2, right? So there are three categories. They are this is MD5, SHA 1, and SHA 2. We will see that how this has function behave basically. Uh, I will give you a quick demo that how uh, this uh, hash functions behave and what is the output of hash function. And I will also tell, tell you how you can use this hash function in day-to-day -day life. This is quite interesting. Just, just uh, keep glued to your skin. We'll be going into the demo mode. Okay, so uh, we are again into our uh, crypto machine. Here I'm having MD5, right? So 
uh, here is all is is all a hash function that is MD5. It, it, behind this block is actually the mathematics. I will not show you the what is the mathematics behind it, right? And this is the input input text here. This will be the input text. Uh, uh, you can you can in hash function you can input any text. You can in, input any file. You can input anything, right? So I will just show you that what is the content of the MD5 hash. So th this is the text that I have written here, and if I pass it to an MD5 machine. I will just play it. You can see. So this is the content of the hash. This is the MD5 hash. This is the fingerprint of this complete text, right? So if I change, uh, you you just uh, keep 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 and watch, keep an eye on this output hash. If I change uh, if I change uh, uh, if I change even this small character and I will again just just see just keep a watch on this output right if I execute it again you can see the hash is completely changed right and also this hash is not dependent upon the content of or the size of the text that I'm inputting so if, if suppose I, I, I uh, uh, input it a simple text that I am when out and if I again run you will see the same length here so you can see whatever that text is, there is a fixed size hash output. So this is an MD5 hash. Uh, the main, main, uh, the the point to take uh, uh, for you is that for any kind of text and any size of text, there is a fixed size uh, hash being produced by the hash algorithm. One thing I would also like you to notice is the size of the hash. This is the size of the hash that is being produced by the MD5 machine. Now let us see what is. Uh, what is what is the picture in SHE one, right? So I will be going to SHE one. So in SHE one again, there is there is a text here, and this is our uh, SHE machine. And uh, uh, just keep a watch on this output text. And you see, the size of the hash has increased. Uh, in in the MD five hash, it was something like that here, right? And and here it has increased a bit. So this is quite stronger. SHA1 is quite stronger in comparison to MD5. And further, if you go for SHA2256 type of hash, you again, uh, this is the same text, and I will be passing it to the SHA2 machine, and let us see what kind of output is there in SHA2256, uh, sorry. So you just see the number of output here, right? Number, number of character output in here. So, I will just show you one by one. This is the SHA256 hash for the file. And again, this text is independent of the size of the content or the size of text here. And as soon as I change a single character, even if I change a white space here, this will change the complete hash here, right? So this is the SHA256 hash. And if you see, this was our SHA1 hash. And this is your MD5. So as we increase the complexity of the hash mechanism, the more stronger we are getting the hash, right? So this was about uh, how I can uh, hash information. Now, but how it is practically useful to us? In fact, uh, whenever uh, you share any file over the net, whether it is on uh, web uh, or, or email, or you give any file to someone, how do you ensure that integrity of the file is maintained? At least, even even if you don't uh, establish the uh, repudiation, non-repudiation, and the on the, or the, the uh, authentication uh, uh, characteristic of the hash, how can you ensure that the file you are uh, the file which you are sending to a recipient that is not changed by the recipient, right? And it is not changed while it's traveling. So there's a real life example of it. In fact, uh, I will show you. Uh, 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 this is this is software that I am using. But in fact, if you are having a Windows 10 machine, uh, you can uh, from the Windows Store, uh, Windows is providing one hash tool. Right? You can just go on the Windows Store and you can download this free tool that is called the hash tool. Right? So uh, this is this is coming with the Windows 10 machine. So if you are having the Windows 10 machine, you can go and you can just install the uh, the hash tool. If I click this hash tool, I will have uh, this 
wonderful uh, skin. Now I will show you how actually you can uh, get the hash of file, right? So uh, I can select any file, and I am I have selected here MD5 uh, hashing mechanism. I will select the file here. It can be any file. Right? This this one file of my computer. I open it, and you can see the output here. Right. So this is basically your hash, and this is the file. So whenever you are sending any file through an email, or you are giving any electronic file to anyone, you can always preserve this hash. If anyone modifies this file, you can always compare the hash of the file, the the modified file, with your original hash. And if there is change in the hash, then you can be sure, doubly sure, and you can say with confidence that the content of the file are being modified, right? Similarly, you can choose any of the uh, algorithm available here. You can choose SHA 512, right? Uh, and um, I will clear this log, right? Select uh, one more file. Suppose I, fly, I see, I, I, I select this file. This is a doc file, right? Now you see the content is changed. So, uh, and also just see the length of the hash. That is quite lengthy. This is more stronger. So you can preserve the hash of the file to uh, keep a record that the file has not been modified. One more thing is important that while you are hashing, the uppercase and lowercase doesn't matter, right? Um, uh, you can you can uh, convert into uppercase, and uh, uh, in hashing, uh, whenever you do hash, there is no meaning of uppercase and lowercase. Uh, both are having same meaning. Uh, like I have converted all the things into uppercase. Those this is the uppercase hash. The hash will be always same. Only thing is the lowercase will be converted to uppercase. So that is one uh, important use of uh, hashing method. Uh, secondly, very important thing is in uh, is that uh, that whenever you have you ever thought that how your password is being kept in a database, right? Uh, like uh, you are using the email, you are using the application. Right, you you are using any web portal and it is storing the password. So in every database, actually they are not storing your clear text password because ultimately, if you store your password into clear text, the database administrator can know the password. So always this hashing mechanism is utilized to store the password. I will just show you one case I have I have with me. Uh, I will just log in uh, to my local uh, web server machine. So this is my MySQL machine, right? So I uh, I will just open one database, and uh, in database I am having this MySQL database, and uh, this is the table where we keep the passwords, right? So you see the password is hashed. So you can't just imagine that how cryptography has come into databases. So actually cryptography cryptography is is, is really a really relevant topic, and you will find cryptography everywhere. Uh, also. Uh, uh, whenever you see, uh, whenever you download any file from popular websites, uh, like like the, this is this is the website of uh, MySQL, and if I download uh, the file from MySQL uh, website, then you can see uh, uh, while downloading, they have also mentioned the MD5 has. Actually, this is mentioned only because of this that if you download in uh, downloading it from any illegitimate source, then you can immediately know that if the file is having different has. Then definitely that file has been modified, and that file may contain some malicious content, right? So you can always compare the downloaded file with this hash. You can download the file, compute a hash, and you can compare with this hash. If both has match, that means your file is intact. So that is all about uh, the hashing mechanism. I think uh, you must have enjoyed uh, the demo of uh, uh, MD5 or MD uh, SHA and uh, how we can use this hash. Hash is very much important in cryptography. Let's move further. Uh, uh, I will not uh, just keep uh, this. I have told in 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 word meeting. Uh, so I will be now uh, covering what is symmetrical key in uh, encryption, right? So uh, the actual encryption part of cryptography comes right from here. The symmetric key cryptography. So. What symmetric key cryptography is? The symmetric key words itself, if you can see, it spells out that the key has to be symmetric. Means for every ciphering mechanism, there is only one set of key, right? There is only one set of key. So if you are encrypting any information, any data, any file with a key, right? And if you are sending that information, that 
encrypted data to someone else and that someone else, the B party, the recipient has to see what was the actual content. Then you have to share the key with the recipient party. Here you can see there is only there's only one key. This, 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 this is only one key uh, which was used by the sender to encrypt the message and the same key is being passed on to the recipient end. So there is a problem of sharing associated with symmetric key that you have to share your secret key in order to uh, in, order, in order that the original information from the uh, from the cipher text. So that is one of the key constant of cyber uh, you know, cyber cryptography, uh, the, uh, the uh, symmetric key cryptography. But uh, that all said, uh, that doesn't mean that symmetric uh, cryptography is all bad. Uh, you'll be surprised to know in, in all the modern communication, we are using the symmetric key in uh, cryptography and uh, you will know how, how, how this is being used as we further proceed in our session. So <clears throat> the key takeaway from this slide is that Symmetric key, uh, symmetric key cryptography is having a single key for both the recipient and the uh, sender and uh, it is used by the sender to encrypt and the message uh, and, and the recipient to decrypt it. This symmetric key encryption is quite uh, easy, but everything which is easy comes with the cost, right? comes with a negative cost, I must say. The first important thing is that uh, uh, what we take away from the previous slide is that in symmetric key encryption, uh, cryptography, there is a single key that you have to share with the recipient. So suppose I am having, I am running an enterprise of say 100 people and I want to communicate one to one with each of the people. If you do permutation commission, you will see that to communicate among all these 100 people, I need to use n into n minus one upon two keys. That is quite a large amount of key that I have to handle personally. And in fact, every person has to handle so much of keys. So for the enterprise having 100 people, the management of key is really cumbersome and the management has to keep track of 4950 keys. Beside that, there is one more problem that because it is symmetric key, once I give a key to a recipient, I am not sure about the integrity of the person who is receiving the key. He may disclose the key to someone else. So, in fact, the key, uh, the objective of cryptography that is confidentiality, that is bitten, right? So, once the key is shared by some other person who is not intended to touch the uh, confidential information, he will know the information. So. Apart from handling a large set of key, it is very important to rotate the keys also uh, in, in the time frame. I, I can just just imagine that I will be keeping the same key for, for a period of one week or one month. I have to rotate the key almost every day so that the confidential of the document is being maintained. So uh, these are the basically lacunas and uh, drawbacks of symmetric key cryptography. Uh, uh, what we have earlier uh, uh, seen uh, in, in, in symmetric key uh, cryptography, uh, uh, symmetric key basically gives you the confidentiality only. only. Uh, uh, the symmetric key is uh, not associated with integrity and authenticity. You can see that whenever I use the symmetric key, I'm not able to uh, actually uh, uh, ensure the integrity and the authentication because Integrity comes with the key, and if someone other claims key, and someone other uses, uh, because uh, uh, two people are having the same key and the other person having the key, it modifies the information. Then the integrity of the information is lost. Right? So integrity and authentication are not accomplished with the symmetric key cryptography. Symmetric key cryptography only ensures the confidentiality of the information. <coughs> Uh, uh, we have heard uh, uh, these terms DES and AES. So DES and AES are basically important uh, 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 cryptography ciphers that are used for symmetric key in uh, symmetric key cryptography. And there is again uh, this is blowfish uh, type of uh, ciphering mechanism. In fact, all the modern uh, email system they are using the blowfish kind of ciphering mechanism. Now we will 
will just recall what we have learned. We have learned about block ciphers and stream cipher. So what we have learned in the past, uh, say one hour about block ciphers and cipher streams. Basically, these two type of cipher streams of the modern uh, ciphering schemes, they fall under the category of symmetric key encryption. Hence, whatever we have discussed about the block ciphers and the stream ciphers, they are basically the part of symmetric key in uh, cryptography. Uh, one thing more I would like to tell you about the block cipher. This is particularly related to the block cipher. Whenever we do any block ciphering mechanism, they are, uh, the, they, they are based on two principles. One is the principle of confusion and one is the principle of diffusion. So what is basically confusion and what is diffusion? When I said confusion, that means that there is no relation between the cipher text, means the output text, means the encrypted text and the key, key with which I am making the cipher text. Right? So there should be a confusion that if I am having the cipher text, Suppose any uh, any attacker or any person who is not intended to receive the information, he has received the cipher text. Then, with the help of the cipher text, he should not be able to drive the key which was used to make this cipher text. So that is one part. Second part is diffusion. That the amount of information that was contained in the plain text that should not be diffused in the cipher text. Please the amount of information that uh, suppose there are 100 uh, characters in the uh, uh, plain text, out of those 100 characters, the cipher text should not have any analogy even for a single character, a single, uh, you can say, word. Right? So there should be total uh, uh, diffusion. So, in all, for any block cipher, there should be maximum uh, amount of confusion and there will be minimum amount of diffusion of information from place text to cipher text. Uh, cyber text, uh, then again, uh, 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 these block mode and steam mode, they come into different flavors, electronic code blocking, code book, uh, cipher block chaining. Uh, these are various categories and, and they are uh, different uh, technological terms. I will not be discussing too much about these technical terms. Uh, quite complex. Uh, we will directly going uh, to uh, demonstrate you that uh, what is the basically uh, what is basically output of uh, these uh, symmetric key crypto systems and uh, uh, AES system. So, in symmetric key crypto system, I told you uh, that the ciphering mechanism that we use, uh, the popular ciphering mechanism is DES, triple DES, and AES. That is advanced uh, encryption system standard. So in DS, okay, the DS was the first uh, uh, set of uh, cipher machine, cipher mechanism or ciphering algorithm that was developed in 1976-77. Uh, uh, and it uses a block size of 64 bits, 64 bit block size. Right. So uh, DES, as I told you already, that DES is, is an, isn't basically a block ciphering mechanism. It is not an uh, stream ciphering mechanism. So we are having a block size of 64, uh, uh, 64 bits. And in fact, we are not using all the 64 bits. We are using only 64, 60, 56 bits and rest of the eight bits are, uh, are rendered for parity. So in this ciphering mechanism, uh, you can see uh, we do 16 rounds of transposition and uh, substitution. Just recall what I had discussed with you when I was discussing the classical encryption. Right. So there was two terms, the transposition and the substitution method. The same transposition and substitution method are utilized in data encryption standard as DES. And this is done 16 times. 16 times it is done to, to have a more complex encrypted output, more complex cyber text at the output so that no one can decipher it. But soon, uh, people started realizing that DES is not having so much of a strength that was needed to protect the information, to maintain the confidentiality and integrity of the information. So what NIST did, uh, that they invited a more stringent form of DES, and then they came up with triple DES, or DES two times. So this is at least the same standard as DES, but the DES is done Three times. So, so that means that so what is the system now? Warning, warning, warning message. 
we are doing the same DES operation three times. And what we did 16 rounds here, we do exactly 16 to, uh, 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 that is, um, 16 to 3, that is 48 times here. And uh, uh, here we are uh, implying different kind of techniques also. In the event of triple DES, actually there was a need felt that to develop something more stronger than DES. So that uh, then uh, NIST came uh, with AES or advanced encryption system. So till now, having the DS encryption limited to 64 bit. But now in AES, we are having the encryption of 128, 256. Even uh, now, now uh, there are A systems which are more stronger than 256. Even we are having uh, uh, more the stronger than 256 AES system. This AES system uh, was invented by. Uh, NAST and there were many candidates, that, but the candidate which was selected was, was the, this, this was developed by two gentlemen, uh, Vincent Rizman and Ron, John Demel. So their uh, algorithm was finally passed the test of AES. The salient points of this, uh, the Lindell algorithm that is, uh, that is the adopted AES is that they process a block uh, data block of 128 bits and more. And there is variable number of rounds. Uh, in the DS, we had uh, uh, 16 uh, rounds, but here uh, the rounds are different. You can have uh, variable number of rounds. And in DS, we were using the substitution and uh, transposition method for ciphering. But here we are using more stringent and more type of ciphering involved in it. So byte uh, byte substitution, uh, then uh, shift uh, row shifting, then column mixing, then key rounding, all these uh, are being implied in AES. I will not go into detail of mathematics involved in it again. What this DES and AES is, basically I would like to show you uh, practically that actually what is the output of this AES and DES. So we are again into our demo machine. So we are having here the DES machine, a DES cipher algorithm. And this is an information box. I will be typing anything. Uh, here it is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And this is a clear test. And here I'm encrypting. This is this is the main block of DS, and I'm uh, encrypting uh, the data. And here I have chosen uh, the ciphering mechanism that I told you. And if I convert this information with the DS ciphering, this will be something. The output. You can see this output is quite different than your input. Right, it is hexadecimal, and also the content, the amount of content in the uh, input, the plain text, and the output is quite different. So this is in contrast to cipher, uh, the classical cipher. This is quite stronger and uh, really, really very, very junk. And you can't infer anything. Even you can't infer the character type, character set which was used in plain text. Uh, you can't derive any character, character set from this cipher text. Likewise, uh, uh, if you use AES, again, uh, I'll be, I'm having the same set of uh, input and output. And here the encryption is AES. If I do it, I'll be having this information. Again, you see, the information is very much unrelated to what was a plain text. So again, with this information, you can't basically deduce what was the character set being used in the plain text information.
Well, let us go back to our the, uh, symmetric key encryption. So, uh, symmetric key, uh, so th th these were actually uh, two uh, DES and uh, AES. Beside that, they, uh, there are other uh, cipher schemes uh, like RC4. Uh, sorry, RC4 is steam cipher, it is not in block cipher. Uh, so, RC5, RC6, blow freeze, these are all block ciphers coming under the head of heading of uh, symmetric encryption. RC4, I already told you, it is a steam cipher. It is mostly used in WEP uh, wireless encryption protocol. Now we'll be finally coming to very important and uh, uh, what we always use kind of cryptography that is called the asymmetric key cryptography. So that is quite interesting part of this complete uh, session and you will love it. So again, as the name says, uh, asymmetric means the keys which are used to encrypt and decrypt the file, they are quite different. Means if I am using a key to encrypt the information, the same key cannot be used to decrypt the information. So this is the key difference when we talk symmetric encryption vis-a-vis -vis asymmetric key encryption. While symmetric encryption was having only one key and that key was to be shared at the recipient end to decrypt the information, but it is not so in asymmetric information, asymmetric key cryptography. So asymmetric key cryptography is in the layman's language is also called public key cryptography because it is having a component of public key. Now again, many people are, for, are, are quite uh, confused about public key and private key. I will just clear the mist uh, from your uh, view. Whenever we go for the asymmetric key cryptography kind of thing, we develop two keys. One is the private key. This private key is the property of the sender. So this private key is always confidential or this also called the secret key. This key is with the owner of the key, the sender, right? And then there's a public key. This, as the name says, this is public key. This is hosted to some third party trusting entities, right? Third party trust entities. You just catch this word third party trust centers. I will be discussing what these trust centers are later. So said that there, uh, there is a set of key, one is private key that remains with the original key holder or the original uh, sender, which intends to send the information, right? Who, who basically owns that certificate or uh, he, who owns uh, that uh, key system. And there's a public key which is available with the third party trust entity, third party trust entity. And this public key can be accessed by anyone. So the beauty is that if I want to encrypt any information, I can encrypt it with my key, which is private to me. And I can send the document to the recipient end and the recipient of the information can decrypt the information with the help of the public key, which he can download from the trust center, third party trust center, right? Third party trust center. Now, now this has an in interesting part. Uh, where you can you can just tell uh, that uh, if anyone can download the public key and decrypt the information, then where where is the question of confidentiality in in the information, right? So that, that is the main uh, magic behind this uh, uh, public key and private key fundamental. You use the key based upon what attribute you want to achieve at the recipient end. So if I want my information to be targeted to only one person, then I'll be using some different kind of keying technique. And if I want that the files should be sent in open place, in public place, and anyone can see, but it should ensure that the file has come from me. So in that scenario, I, can, I will use a different set of procedure to encrypt the data, right? So the choice of encrypting the choice of encryption key is basically depending upon the output what we desire. So I'll be encrypting the data with a public key or the private key. It depends upon what output basically I want, what I want to deliver at the recipient end. 
said that uh, uh, one more takeaway from this slide is that these two keys are one way traffic again if anyone has a public key which is available with that third party trust center that doesn't mean with the help of the public key he can drive my private key this is totally one way fashion uh, like, like what i told you in hash hash is totally a one way function so this is again a one way function once a public key is with you with that public key you can't drive my private key that is one aspect that we can take from this slide So, uh, next thing is that, uh, as I told you, uh, what kind of key I must use? It is dependent upon that what objective I want to achieve. Right. So, I will just zoom on this slide a bit. So, first thing is that I want to secure the message format. Right. That means that I want to send the information. To only one person, and I maintain. I want to maintain the confidentiality of the information. Right. So what I will do that whenever I am sending a file, instead of using my key, I will use the recipient's public key to encrypt the data. And this public key of the recipient is available with the third party trust center, which is open to all. I can download the key of the recipient, and I can use it to encrypt the data, and I will send it to the recipient. In effect, what it will do is that because the recipient is having the private key, he only can open the information, he only can decrypt the information, no one else, because the keys are mutually exclusive. If the message is encrypted with one key, it can be decrypted with the other key only. It can't be decrypted with the same key. Means if I am encrypting the information with the public key, the inform the cipher text can't be decrypted with the same public key. It has to be decrypted with the private key, and similarly vice versa. If I am encrypting the information with the private key, it can be decrypted only by the public key, right? So if I intend that the information should be targeted to only one person, then I will not be using my public keys, my keys. I will absolutely not use my keys. I will instead use the recipient's keys and what key? The public key. So I will use the public key of the recipient, encrypt the information, and I will set you send it to the recipient and because the recipient is already having his private key, with his private key, he will be able to uh, see the original information. He can decrypt the information. No one else can see the information until, until unless the recipient himself discloses his private key to someone else. Otherwise, no one else can see. Now, the second scenario is the open message format that I told you. Right. So. Like we are sending emails and uh, uh, we, we we do digitally sign uh, various documents. So in this case, what we do is that we sign the document and we encrypt the document with the help of our private key, our private key, right? So we are encrypting the document with our private key and then throwing the document to the public. Anyway, so, right? So uh, like like I, I'm I'm using some office order, I will sign it with my private key and I will mail it to everyone. So everyone that is spent, they can download my key. In fact, uh, every 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 uh, software that you uh, that you uh, uh, use to open that file, that software itself has a provision to download the uh, public key. Right? You need not to do it uh, uh, do it manually. So if I'm sending a signed uh, or the encrypted PDF document to anyone with my private key encrypted, so. At the recipient end, as soon as you open that uh, the file, uh, if you are on net, then public key is automatically automatically downloaded from the third party test center. So this kind of in in this system, uh, I am using my private key. I will encrypt the document with my private key, and I will send to the public uh, to the recipient, and the recipient can download my my uh, my, my my public key, and they can in. Uh, decrypt the information. So this is the phenomena, and what I told you that what type and uh, what type of procedure that we adopt to encrypt data that is totally depend upon the objective that you want to achieve in asymmetric key encryption. So, uh, but uh, again, uh, uh, whenever you are doing uh, such a uh, 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 heavy thing. Um, uh, whenever you are uh, improving the things, improvement always uh, comes with the cost. And similar is with asymmetric key also. 
the main uh, uh, you can limiting point of asymmetric key is that asymmetric or the public key cryptography is much much slower than your symmetric key uh, encryption uh, only because of the fact that asymmetric key cryptography involves much more mathematical uh, uh, mathematical uh, formulas, much more mathematical complex mathematics involved in symmetry in 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 asymmetric key cryptography. And besides that, asymmetric key cryptography is dependent upon the third party trust center. So it is quite quite uh, uh, slower. Key size are quite large. And uh, like uh, we had discussed in symmetric key, we had block ciphers, 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 uh, and uh, steam ciphers. When we talk of symmetric key encryption, there are a deeply, totally different set of ciphering mechanism. So first is your RSA. RSA is quite famous. This was uh, developed by three gentlemen. Uh, uh, the photo you can see, uh, and they are uh, surname were Ravid, Samir, and Alderman. So uh, based upon their uh, surname, this. Is coined RSA because actually, actually these three uh, three gentlemen they own a company that is called RSA Security. So uh, the, so so hence uh, this 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 name comes the RSA algorithm. So so RSA is very very popular and in all the certificate system we are using RSA and uh, recall it was uh, developed way uh, back in uh, 1978 and still we are using the RSA. So such is the strength of this RSA mechanism of asymmetric uh, key cryptography. There are other uh, there are other uh, uh, ciphering mechanisms also. Uh, while while RSA is very very useful and very uh, uh, very used, but the point is that RSA is quite heavy on mathematics and it really needs a heavy computational power to execute ciphering and deciphering. Uh, to overcome this, uh, they uh, developed one elliptical uh, curve cryptography. Uh, this uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, ciphering mechanism. Uh, it is lightweight at the same time, but it is equally effective as your RSA. Because of its lightweight nature, it is often used in uh, your uh, smart cards. So all the smart cards uh, that you figure out, uh, they, they are using this uh, elliptical uh, curve cryptography uh, in the form of asymmetric key encryption. Having looked uh, for uh, asymmetric and symmetric key encryption, what is the takeaway uh, with Asymmetric key cryptography compared to your symmetric key cryptography is first the key management is quite simplified. If you recall, in symmetric key encryption or symmetric key cryptography, we had n into n minus one by two number of keys that we have to mention. Um, we have to manage that was uh, four nine five zero uh, for the for the enterprise of hundred people. But in case of asymmetric encryption. We need to, if we are having an uh, 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 enterprise of 200 people, we need to mention only 2 into n means 100 keys. Uh, just look at the figures. In symmetric key, we, for the for the enterprise of 100 people, we have to manage 4,000 uh, keys. But in if we are using asymmetric key, we have to just manage 200 keys, right? The main difference comes the objectivity of asymmetric key and and symmetric key. While the symmetric key only ensure the confidentiality of the information, but but the asymmetric key encryption system or the in, or the cryptography gives you additionally the integrity and non-reproduction non factor also. So symmetric key gives you confidentiality, but asymmetric gives you two additional things that is integrity and non-reproduction. We will see how it is done. Now we will come to hybrid cryptography. So we have seen two phases of the cryptography that is symmetric and asymmetric. The good thing of the symmetric thing was symmetric cryptography is that it was it was quite fast. But the bad thing was that you have to share the key. The good part of asymmetric is that uh, uh, it is quite secure. Uh, we we have to uh, we have to manage less number of keys. But at the same time, it is very cumbersome. It is very hard. And it is also time consuming. It is quite slow. So in the habit key, habit, uh, uh, habit uh, cryptography system, we use the good factors of both asymmetric and symmetric cryptography. So use uh, asymmetric cryptography that whenever a client wants to communicate with the server, the first authentication and non-reproduction 
of the complete channel is being done with the asymmetric cryptography and then these asymmetric channel they use the delivery of symmetry keys right so the authentication part is being done from the with the help of asymmetric key cryptography and once the authentication and non repetition is is established then the same channel is used to share a dynamically dynamically generated symmetric key between the client and the server and rest of the session then travels on the symmetric key because symmetric key is quite fast and your computers can really perform faster operation this is the same thing that we use in https so https the initial handshake is in form of asymmetric cryptography and later on as soon as the uh, symmetric key is arrived and shared between both the client and the, uh, and the server the rest of the communication on the web server is done on symmetric key oh this is just uh, the summary that i have noted down uh so uh, uh public key cryptography standards uh, as we call uh, it is based on the asymmetric key and what you will see mostly uh, particularly if you are dealing with uh, uh, certificates and this is this is uh, this is Uh, the standard the uh, pks number 12 personal information exchange standard this is being used in digital signatures and digital certificates uh this is fips i have not covered fips no this is an interesting part that once i have said that in symmetric key encryption the public key is with a third party test center now here comes the third party test model or the test setup why it is needed and what is basically third party test center so in asymmetric encryption it is very important that for the distribution of key and the operation of the complete process we must have an identity who keeps the public keys so these are called the cs or the certification authorities so in this complete infrastructure what we call for a public key infrastructure this is basically based and is it 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 comes into existence only for asymmetric key encryption so the idea behind development of any public key infrastructure is to facilitate asymmetric encryption so with Uh, the, uh, the these are the physical entity entities these are the physical organizations which basically issue you the certificate and this certificate contains two keys then this one is your private private key and the second is the public key while the private key is meant for you only you need to uh, securely ensure that it is secret and it resides with you only and you don't distribute with anyone else and the public key part of your uh, uh, certificate or the signature is being kept at the directory So that data is being maintained by the uh, certification authorities so a pki in short delivers these four important structures these four important services authentication integrity confidentiality and repetition authentication means that if i am signing with my uh, uh, private key and it goes to uh, the recipient we spend download the public key according to the content which is there in the uh, information in the cipher text so with the public key that he downloads for decrypting the information along with it travels my identity the person who has signed the document so basically with that mechanism it ensures that it is uh, the uh, the person uh, who has sent the information that is identified integrity means that if i am signing uh, uh with my private key then uh it, uh, um, uh then it can be opened only with only with a public key which is pair of my private key it can be uh, uh no one no one can have my private key so whatever i sign with my uh, my private key it will be open only with a public key confidentially of course uh encrypted is there so until and unless it is not decrypted you can't know what is the content non repetitions comes to the factor because the third party test model he has already verified so whenever i am applying for the digital certificate or digital signature my complete data that who i am who vinod singh is what destination he is having who in which organization he is serving 
this all data is traveling to the certification uh, authority and whenever he issues a uh, uh, keys and he is to certificate in the certificate this all is mentioned there so the pki basically has four components the directory direct services the um, key management services uh, the certificate management services and cryptography services i will just quickly uh, tell you about uh, all this night i will not go into detail but i said that is services means everyone who is applying for a digital certificate or digital signature the public key is stored somewhere so you can just say that it is an uh, it is is in locker or it is an uh, uh, service in which all your public key whoever is applying for a digital certificate or digital signature all those public key keys are served there so this is what we mean by that services then certificate management service right so what kind of certificate do you want matlab it is a signing certificate it is a encryption certificate right and uh, what will be the uh, uh, cipher mechanism involved in services how to generate the certificate all this peripheralia comes under the ambit of certificate management service then there is key management service of course whenever you are getting a digital certificate you can well understand that digital digital certificate and digital signatures come with an expiry date so after the expiry date the certificate has to be revoked right so all this management key distribution uh, and uh, key uh, revocation everything comes under the man, under this uh, preview of key management services then of course the cryptography services here we define that what will be the hash use what will be the symmetric key uh, encryption that will be used what will be the asymmetric type of information used whether it will be using other say cipher or it will be using the uh, electrical uh, curve cipher all this uh, things come under the uh, cyber uh crypto graphy services this is something to tell uh, that i have already told you in brief here i will not touch upon all these things uh i will quickly go uh to a uh, important thing that is called the digital signature right so digital signatures are basically uh, the uh, uh they are they are akin to your handwritten signature so what you write when you sign any document with your ink pen the same is a function with the digital signatures this is simply give you a digital identity digital signature with which you can sign the uh, you know sign the document it is having the legal validity uh, according to it act 2000 uh, 2000 so again when we talk of digital signature this has a key pair one is your private key and public key so all this information is delivered to you on a dongle if you uh, any one of you use the digital signature you will be receiving a dongle a usb dongle with you so this dongle is having the private key and the public key right so uh, uh, in fact uh, 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 apart uh, uh, from the secrecy of your private uh, key the public key is also stored uh, on the uh, directory server directory services in the ca while the private key is delivered to you the copy of private key is not kept by the ca the private key is meant only for you while the public key is hosted on the directory services right so uh, whenever uh, we we sign a document what is the procedure of signing the document let us see somewhere so whenever i want to sign any document so suppose this is a document so uh, as i told you the asymmetric key is quite heavy on computation right so if i am signing document uh you would say that i am encrypting document then how the other party is able to see even if there is no internet connection he will not be able to download the public key but the catch is here that how actually we sign it actually we don't encrypt the actual information right what we do to ensure the non repetition factor and integrity of the information what is then that there is a hash machine that is hash algorithm which is predefined and you pass the message through this hash algorithm and there is a hash developed this hash can be md5 sh1 sh2 any kind and then this hash is being encrypted with the private key the private key which is my private key this become the digital signature and when you send the document to receiver the receiver receives this digital signature and the message also so whenever you are signing suppose a pdf document you will see the only one document but in one document these two components will be there one will be the message and second will be the digital signature so what the other party will do to authenticate you and ensure non repetition what they will do that one part he is already having the digital signature and 
second part he is already having the message so he will pass the message with the same hashing algorithm and he will arrive at a message register or the hash and because i have already derived the sender has the sender has already derived the hash and it has encrypted that hash with his private key now at the receiving end the receiver will download the public key and will decrypt this hash and arrive at the hash which i had sent right the receiver hands the sender has sent so the receiver has two hashes one which has he has arrived from the message which is available with you along with the hash uh, encrypted hash and second is by decrypting the hash which is which i has sent so if those both hashes match that ensures the integrity and non repetition of the snitch and that is how the distributed snitches work so you are not actually encrypting the message you are encrypting the hash of the message so all the distributed snitches they are doing uh, cryptography as well as the hashing function at this point i would like to show you a very very interesting uh, pdf uh, demonstration just hook on uh, this is a, this 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 you can uh, use in your public life also this is very interesting and this is this example i am quoting you uh, uh, from my real life experience uh, sometime back we got a case study where the digital signatures were forged so i will just show you how this is being done so uh, you can see uh, i am having a directory and uh, i am having some files here so uh, uh, this is this is the original file which is signed by my 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 actual uh, signature digital signature so if i open this file you can see this is an actual uh, uh, file uh, which is digitally signed by my uh, private key right so uh, 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 this, this is the signature this is a digital signature i have put here so if you click this uh, if you open this uh, document in pdf so if you click here you will get a pop up which says the signature properties if i click here it will give one more pop up and if i click one more uh, time so signature certificate right so it gives the detail complete detail of the ca as well as my identity right so the ca is cca india and it has delivered me the certificate through safe in kit online and this is my identity so what is the identity it is by i am vinod singh i am serving department of telecom in government of india right and this is my email id i would like you to just remember the content of the file this is vinod singh he is serving department of telecom government of india and his email is this thing these all information uniquely identify a person who is vinod that is me and this is the actual signature the real signature of my digital signature and this is an actual document which i have signed with my digital signature uh, this i i signed uh, while while i was serving bihar let's say as director compliance right now see what happens the first important myth is that anything which is digitally signed you take a copy photo you you can take a print and if it, if it is it is if it is looking like that you just confirm that it is digitally signed it is not so digital sign is on a digital document then of course you must verify the document digitally on a computer if you take the print and then just you say that it is being digitally signed this is of no use and it is useless so first take is that whenever you get a document which says that it is digitally signed you must immediately click on this signature box and you should verify that what is the origin and what is the root of this certificate you will see the complete ca information the certification authority information from where the it is coming if it is not coming from the ca then of course this document is fake this digital signature is fake how this digital signature is fake fake i will just demonstrate you in a moment of second so while this is the original document i will just show you that how the faking process is being done uh, before that i will just i just want to mention that whatever i am going to demonstrate you it is only for education purpose uh, do it don't practice it it is totally illegal so i can well understand uh, what i mean uh, you can understand uh, so 
this was the raw document in fact this was the raw document which i signed right this uh, which i signed which i showed you previously it has no signature right so what an attacker what an what an uh, what an forger or a, a person who wants to uh, who wants to copy my signature he will do because this is in public document this in public document this this signed document this in public document so what he can do he can take a snap of this he can take a picture of this and he can just take out this part he can just take out this part and what it will to do that it will just he will he will frame a document he can modify the content of the document and what he will do he will just take uh, uh take the snap of what, what i have told you uh, he can take the snap so uh, this is this is a snap that he can take so i have already taken snap you can look at it so this is the signature snap that i have taken of my document right so if i am having any document which i have forged i will just click tools and uh edit text and images and i will tell add text I will take this pic from here, open, and paste. Just closely watch it. What I'm doing. I have carefully placed this document here, and I will add a link to it. Right. So this is my document. You can see it looks very much similar to the original document, although it is not the original document which I have signed. And to make it more genuine, what I will do, I will add a link here. I will select this. Right. I will take a link. I will. link it with a web page and because i am serving as a dot person i will make a link here www.dot.dot.zov.dot.dot.zov.dot.in and my job is done right so you uh, uh, anyone if you if 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 a if a forger or a person with illicit mind he forces it and he will send and you will just click here and you will see that it is it is having a uh, hovering link dot.gov.in and if you don't know how the digital signature works you will just just uh, imagine that this is coming from a legitimate source and it is a legitimate document but mind it this is not a legitimate document uh, you can just open it right and uh, although i have disabled the uh, opening of link here but as soon as i uh, as you open it it will open you the dot website so it will give the feel of an original signed document to anyone noise who is not knowing the cryptography and his who is not knowing how actually the digital signature works so this is this is a real case fact that i am telling you i have got one uh, case example from one of the field units of dot so it is just to educate to that because we are in daily use we are using this digital signature so be aware that whenever you are getting such document you just check that uh, how how it is being done and what is actually the digital signature one more thing i will say i will tell you uh, i will show you one more thing uh now this was the, this was one uh, one uh, one uh, aspect of the picture this can be more complicated and it will, i will uh, make the document more real more real so that uh, the recipient will feel that actually it is being signed by a legitimate man legitimate person who is vinod so i will again open this test document here uh, this is this is the original document which i have not signed and i will click fill and sign i will place a signature right so just closely watch what i am doing i am actually putting an signature to this and just closely watch what i am doing right i am really putting one digital signature here i am devising a new digital id next i will devising a new pkcs12 just recall what i have told you what pkcs12 is right next now here i am having a window in this window i can type anything right 
Suppose I am an attacker. I, I want to force Vinod Singh's document and I will write here. This is Vinod Singh. Organization is NTIPLIT and uh, Department of Telecom, right? Email at this uh, Vinod.Singh. Uh, for identity, I am just saying if you know dot uh, sing at the rate fake dot com, right? I will not, uh, but but mind it, I can input any information here, any information here, right? And in country, I will tell it uh, that it is I'm Indian, right? And uh, further, I can define what is the key algorithm and uh, flan of America, and this is all technical matters. So, next, right? And I give a password here. Okay. Right. So see. Director. Yes. And sign it. Oh, sorry. I forgot to use my password. And it is saying me to ask uh, to save this information because as soon as I sign it, it will be a secure document. So I name it as fake, right? And the magic is done. You see, actually I have signed this document and it is who who copy of the original document which I showed you. And the beauty is that I have not used any picture and it is saying it is a valid signature. And if I click this one, right? It pops up this menu signature properties. It gives me a so signed certificate menu and you can see that. I am having a legitimate signature. Every information is there. Although I have used Vinod Singh at fake.com just to identify that it is a fake document. What I mean to say that you can put the digital signature here. Legally and this digital signature can have any attribute, any name. It can be my boss's name. It can be your name, your designation, your email, anything. So I can force your document, force the document on behalf of you, right? So it will appear that it has been signed legally by you. But the key difference here is, again, you can identify that there is no CA. This is a self-signed certificate. So again, if you are not knowing the fundamental of CA and how CA behaves and how CA works, how DSC works, you will not be able to appreciate that it is a fake document. But really, it is a fake document. So it is very, very important. So this is very true, genuine copy of any fake document. This is very, very genuine copy of uh, original one, which, which will, of course, many of you, I, I can definitely, with confidence, say 95% of people will believe that it is actually signed by Vinod, although it is not signed by Vinod. So that is the learning point which I wanted to show you. This is very important that uh, uh, digital signatures are quite used in government, uh, uh, government, uh, and uh, with 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 uh, the computer technology and the networks and the computer communication evolving. The use of digital signature is going far and large. So you must be very much careful whenever you receive the document and whenever you receive complaint about forged uh, forgery. You must verify in such a way. So that was uh, all about the uh, PDF uh, signing. Mm -hmm. Where I was, okay. So this was the digital signatures and similar is the case of the digital certificate. So digital certificate and digital signatures are same thing uh, in, in two different packets. So digital signature is meant for you as a person and digital certificate is meant for the server. Okay, uh, as the digital sign signature is being given to you and the private copy is private private key is kept with you and public key is with the third party to center. In case of digital certificate, the private key is kept with the server and the public key is with the third party test model, right? So the case is the, the, uh, the complete system is saying on the packaging is quite different. In digital signature, you are having your own key uh, delivered to you on a FIPS compliant, FIPS 140 compliant digital dongle. But in case of certificate, the certificate is software format, soft format, and it is given and it is stored in the web server or any server. And whenever you visit HTTPS site, this certificate comes to picture. And then what is done? The asymmetrics, asymmetric cryptography comes into picture, and uh, uh, your the session starts with asymmetric cryptography, and then 
uh, the keys asymmetric keys are transferred with the help of asymmetric channel and then they communicate uh, over the, the symmetric channel. Uh, so there was a quick uh, uh, thing about uh, this one. Uh, digital certificate uh, signatures. Actually, what uh, information that I showed in, in in PDF that is called the X509 uh, format. That is the standard format in which the certificates are being delivered. So I will not go into detail of what X509 this is. As to replace, I have already told you in between so many times. Uh, so that is all that I wanted to cover. And at the last, in the last of the session, I will just uh, uh, end up with this humor. That in crypto nerd's imagination, <laughs> suppose I get a file and then a crypto nerd will say, Oh, boss, let's now develop a compute hardware system and uh, let us build a million dollar cluster to crack it. But, <laughs> but take it, guys, you just can't break other systems. It is quite strong. Instead of putting so much money and so much time to break the algorithm, it is better to. To uh, uh, to to point a gun <laughs> on the head of the auditor and you could get the password off. Uh, that was just a joke uh, to end up the session. That is all I what I wanted to tell about you. And uh, this is just a summary. We discuss cryptography. We discuss symmetric asymmetric keys. We discuss classical cryptography. We discuss modern cryptography. We discuss what is transposition, what is substitution. We also discuss steam ciphers, block ciphers. We discuss HTTPS. We discuss um, hashing mechanism, uh, MD5, SHA, SHG225, and we also discussed a lot about digital signature and digital server. That is all for me, and uh, floor is open for questions and answers. So anyone, uh, uh, if they are having any questions and answers, they are most welcome. I suppose I have uh, uh, raised a lot of query in your minds, and I suppose that it was an interesting session from you, and all of you must have enjoyed. So forum is open, uh, friends, if you want to have any questions? Uh, I'm eagerly waiting for your questions to the player. Thank you, sir. Uh, the floor is open for questions. Uh, participants can unmute themselves and ask their queries. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is Sir, my uh, sir, it was a very interesting session, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, sir, but uh, uh, my system has uh, encrypted with the uh, virus, sir, RABD virus. But uh, I am unable to decrypt it, but it uh, it is showing uh, 60,000 rupees. Uh, we have to pay for uh, decrypting the virus, sir. All the files are. Uh, if suppose there is a file uh, called JPEG or document, and the next to it dot and uh, RIBD, the extension came, sir. And all the files are not open, sir. So my friend, it is it is ill fate. Uh, I must uh, tell you that uh, you are a victim of ransom attack. And as, as I told you, as I told you, uh, uh, these people. Uh, uh, Either they may be using a symmetric key or asymmetric key, but but because this is uh, whenever you get a ransom attack, this is this is a kind of symmetric uh, uh, symmetric uh, key uh, uh, cryptography being used. So as I told you, it is really really hard, and uh, you you need mammoth uh, computing power to crack this algorithm. So only the thing until unless you have the key, you won't be able to decrypt your files, and uh, these. Uh, then some uh, where attacks are quite uh, notorious in this thing that they employ a very very hard key and very lengthy key to encrypt your data. So uh, you are nowhere. The only thing is that I can tell you and all my friends who are uh, in the meeting that make a habit that you always install anti malware and ransomware on your computers. Also make it habit that uh, all your important files are backed up on a hard drive. So uh, like I do, what I am. Teaching you actually, I do practice them in my in my daily routine. Also, I I at least uh, take a copy of all my important files on my uh, hard drives at least once or twice a month. That is only despite and besides that, you keep your computer safe with a malware and an anti ransomware uh, component installed along with your antivirus. 
there is of course no way to decrypt back, get, decrypt back uh, what is being encrypted on your computer until you get the case. And of course, uh, the person who has hacked your computer and he has uh, encrypted your files, he will not give you the secret keys, of course. Oh, okay, sir. Sir, but it, will it be available for the future, sir? It will be... No, no sir. No. 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 Actually, in India, uh, computationally, these keys are so hard that it will take, uh, uh, you say, uh, 100 years to uh, break the keys. If, if, you, if you try to uh, break it, uh, if you uh, employ a mammoth computing power, if you try to break uh, the algorithm, then too, it will not be possible. It will take so much time. It will take so much power, computing power, happens, and it will take so much time. Because as I told you, when you design okay. the main aim is that uh, it should be very much expensive as well as it should be very time consuming to break it. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, any other questions, friends? I think we should close now. There are no questions. So, uh, now I request uh, senior DTG NK Prit, uh, Sri UK Sivastha, sir, uh, share his closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation by Vinod, as uh, always, and he has covered a lot of uh, things. And uh, I, for one, know that there was much more material that he had, and he could have gone on and on. Uh, but I had advised him that uh, give it in small packages because it will be very difficult for people to absorb all at one time. Um, so. Uh, Basically, he has covered the confidentiality, authentication, data integrity, non-repudiation. These are all the things that uh, we are dealing with in day-to-day -day life. And it's going to be more and more important. So it's important that everyone is educated about it. We'll try to do a follow-up uh, program on this uh, sometime in near future. Uh, I'm tempted to reply to the question that was asked uh, by an individual. Um, about uh, his computer being hacked. Uh, you see, there is a, um, uh, we, we will also do a program on com uh, quantum computing, perhaps uh, that will be very interesting. And uh, I was told that uh, if there is a, something is uh, encrypted with RSA 640 uh, and uh, which has a number length of 193 uh, digits and uh, if you have a 2.2 gigahertz processor, it can be factored in uh, almost five months time. So it will take five months to crack the code. But if you have a comp uh, uh, quantum machine, it can be done in 17 seconds. So all that uh, Vinod has told uh, will become outdated uh, in let us say three, four, four years time, maybe within a decade's time. So whole uh, rig uh, rigmarole of uh, encryption, etc., is going to see a sea change over a period, period of time. So we are all, uh, you know, waiting for exciting times to come when the quantum computing comes. Uh, I'm sure that uh, our people will take note and uh, do a program also on quantum computing. Uh, for now, at least, it was a wonderful program, uh, and uh, I'm sure everybody got benefited. Some of uh, them logged out because uh, you know, towards the end, it became slightly longish. But all the same, thank you very much, Vinod, and thanks all of you for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your remarks. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, kind words. As we come to the end of this session, I thank uh, Vinod, sir, for delivering this comprehensive and in-depth session. Sir, the zeal with which you take upon such tech-intensive topics, uh, delivering in lucid terms, uh, manner, and your energy inspires us. Thank you, sir, for taking us all along in this deep dive into the much-talked but less-known uh, topic of cryptography.